So America's supply chain helped to win the great power competition of the 20th century. And today, America's supply chain risks losing the great power competition of the 21st century. Outsourcing and globalization led to a vast, opaque, interconnected web of defense value chains, many of which run straight through China. And this has led to a fundamental vulnerability in our defense programs. We lack the ability to secure our hardware. We lack the ability to ensure continuity in the event of a conflict. And we lack the means to surge production when the need arises. The defense industrial base is frustrated, too. The primes can't see deep into their sub-tiers. They can't connect and collaborate and ensure resilience through their whole global value chains. So the answer to this problem over the last five, 10 years has been supply chain risk management tools. So what that involves is taking public data, apply some AI, apply some human analysts, and basically do counterintelligence reports on probabilistic links and see what might be connected and what might be a problem. Those tools are terrible. It's dashboards, it's reports. You might get together in a skiff and whisper about a problem, but it's shards of data. There's no ground truth. There's no common operating picture between a PEO and the prime. There's no common operating picture between the prime and its subs. There's no basis to collaborate and take action. There's no trusted network. We believe that the Defense Department and the Defense Industrial Base both deserve better. To build a resilient and secure and dynamic defense supply chain, we believe that a trusted product network that connects buyers and suppliers across multiple tiers is necessary. So our solution is the Altana product network. We've built this product network on top of the world's largest connected body of supply chain data in existence. And importantly, this is both publicly available data, like everybody else, and it's privately held data with the world's largest logistics providers, financial institutions, and global enterprises all connected to our network, fueling that network with visibility and intelligence. And now, through product passports, which we're going to demonstrate, it's possible to connect and collaborate across multiple tiers of buyers and suppliers across these defense value chains. Through product passports, it's possible now to bridge the information, collaboration, and trust gaps between buyers and suppliers, between the DOD and its primes across these value chains. Through the Altana product network, we're making it possible to build the dynamic, the resilient, and adaptive defense supply chain that can actually win the 21st century. Over to you. Defense supply chains today are fragmented across static spreadsheets and outdated PDFs, making real-time collaboration impossible and compliance difficult to demonstrate. That's why Altana has developed product passports, which serve as real-time records of complete supply chains that actually dynamically update as entities join the system and include their own product details. So I'm going to show you what this looks like within a real product environment. Any entity is able to stand up a passport for any good of interest and then share that passport record with any of their collaborators. So that can include suppliers of theirs from whom they want to collect documentation and validate their value chains. It can also include authorities and buyers to whom they want to demonstrate their own compliance and diligence and become better vendors in the process. And as that sharing takes place, everything is completely dynamic. So buyers and government authorities can go in and indicate places where they see potential risks. And then as industry stakeholders get alerted to this, they can go ahead and add in their own documentation and annotation within the system to respond. This creates a single medium of exchange for all parties to benefit from. So government authorities and stakeholders are able to get unprecedented levels of visibility into extended supply networks and even get the ability to understand risk exposure in real time across those networks. And industry stakeholders are able to take control of what data they share. They're able to clarify the requirements of the buyers that they work across and any authorities they're responsible to. And they're able to benefit from an expanding product network themselves uh, as more entities continuously join this, this ecosystem. This drives trust and resiliency and ultimately creates a massive amount of efficiency through government and industry collaboration. And it's all powered by Altana's product passports. 
Now, that said, we understand how difficult collaboration can be for entities to achieve in the absence of knowing where risk sits. And right now, many entities that we work with commonly only know who their tier one suppliers are and what products they're getting for them and have little visibility past that. Altana strives to fix that by actually establishing full-scale records of all of the different relationships around the world that are meaningful to the development of these products. We will combine our customers' own product information, including identifiers and labels, with the broader product network that we've established, which includes more transaction information than anywhere else. And as this information gets onboarded, users are able to define their own persona-based views in order to see what matters to them specifically, and then model out a variety of different scenarios, including sanctions, guide-up alerts, tariffs, conflict, port strikes, and more. As they define these types of scenarios, they can actually start to quantify the overall impact to their networks and understand the breakdown of the product and supplier impact. So that's really helpful for strategic uh, overviews and insight. But overall, this type of dashboarding alone is not going to drive operational excellence, and it's certainly not going to help any enterprise that wants to start engaging their suppliers in meaningful and constructive conversations about upstream risk. Which is why Altana makes it really easy for users to click into any potential product of interest and start to understand what the broader context looks like across the network. We only need a minimal number of inputs from customers in order to get started, including for every product, a short goods description and the name and address of the tier one supplier that they're working with, and that's it. From there, we're able to place that entity within the broader product network by pulling on relationships that are recent and related to the development of that specific good. As users navigate through this, they're able to select previously undisclosed sub-tier suppliers and explore what the nature of these relationships actually entails getting granular visibility into things like transaction dates, types of goods transacted between different counterparties, quantities, weights, identifiers, and more. And as users explore the nature of these relationships and start to understand any risk that Altana automatically helps them surface across these networks, they can start to take action with their teams by doing things like validating the relationships that Altana finds, by triaging with their team any kind of insight that surfaced to them by making direct annotation within the system to provide guidance around what they're seeing outside of Altana, and by uploading documentation critical to their missions. And this is something that transforms passive visibility into active network design. Another core component of active network design for many entities is the ability to source net new products and suppliers where necessary. And historically, this is a process that can take months of manual desk research in order to complete and often still yields limited visibility into the exact risk posture that those supposed vendors face. That's why Altana makes it really easy for users to search through the entire product network at large, keying in exactly what types of product details they're interested in exploring and searching them within its system. From here, they'll be taken into the exact product network connections that came up most recently across those goods so they can actually start to explore the global footprint across which all of these different transactions are taking place and start to visually identify the way that these networks get constructed, keying in on things like high gravity nodes that take place across these ecosystems. As they find entities that are of potential interest to them, they can start to expand detail related to ownership structures, related to the extended supply chains that those companies are connected to. They can start to learn more about the actual risk profile that these entities face through visual cues and in-depth explanations. This maximizes the amount of visibility that entities are able to see across the world while minimizing the ultimate amount of risk burden that they would take on by adopting these entities as vendors. So as entities move from searching to vetting to bringing on board actors, they're essentially manually or automatically curating their own value chains. As they make these kinds of changes, they're able to enhance their product passports with that kind of information, thereby contributing to a far more compliant and resilient defense sector that's built on trusted collaboration.